Hello and welcome to The Skating Lesson. I'm Dave Lees. And I'm Jonathan Byer. And we have one of my favorite guests <laughs> today. Ah, hi. <laughs> Renee Roca, welcome back to The Skating Lesson. Hi, thank you so much. I'm thrilled to be back with you guys. Yeah. So what did you think of the ice dance at the World Championships? First of all, where did you watch it? How did you watch it? Yes. I watched it at home. And, okay. Um, you know, I just, it, I thought it was so interesting. I liked, I, I thought Japan, bravo mm. Japan, full seats to the rafters, everybody mm. in a mask. The crowd applauded for everyone. It didn't matter if you were in 30th place or in first place, you were applauded, you were supported, your flag was held up. It's like, they just do it right. It just really, that was so impressive to me, the kindness and the support of the crowd and just the way they the way they handle it is so lovely for any competitor from mm. everywhere. Terrific. And I thought it was especially nice. You saw the audience rise to the occasion when they felt someone needed a little boost yes. of support after yes. a fall when you, they sensed someone was struggling. And I mentioned to Dave on uh, in one of the other discipline recaps that what was so lovely for me is oftentimes they treat it like a hockey game these events. So every time there is not skating happening, there's this blaring pop music or people yelling and interviews and weird, you know, little activity. Yeah. And I love that it felt like a very serious event with a lot yeah. of silence that added to the gravitas before someone's program or score. I just really love when an event is held in Japan. Yeah. Yeah, it's terrific. They're just the best. And it's such a difference when you see, for example, um, you know, even our US championships are lightly attended and, you know, it's fine and everything, but then you go to Japan and it's just, it's the full deal. Mm -hmm. with the most kindness and support you could ever ask for. Yeah. Even coming from the announcers. Yeah. I thought the announcing in the Everything. arena. No stone was left unturned and it's yeah. genuinely felt. I mean, it's just mm -hmm. such a genuine love for the sport fandom, you know, all of that. It's great. It's just so great to be embraced like that as a skater, you know, mm. it's great. So there has been a little bit of controversy about this event because of the way the scores worked out because Chalk and Bates had a fall and some of the other ways that the grades of execution were judged. But I was curious, when you were an ice dancer, you were under the 6-0, yeah. How did a fall impact the program? Well, I mean, obviously teams would win with falls before. So. Great to complain off 94. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> I mean, it's considered, it obviously, it depends how messy the fall is. If somebody trips and falls like, you know what, Madison just kind of sat back and he yanked her up so quick. It wasn't on an element. It didn't really disrupt anything. You can have a really messy fall if a lift or, or a footwork or something takes both of you down and it's a mess and it's a long time to pick up and you miss a chunk. Okay, obviously, yeah. But if it's a little, if it's a little flaw, uh, you know, it, it was, I don't know, in the six point system, maybe it was, that's a bad boo-boo. Mm -hmm. That's a bad, yeah fall but there's there's different levels to falls how how really horrendous and how much you miss i think the big takeaway for me was it was our understanding that if there is a fall in the program in addition to the the one point deduction ideally that the pcs is not supposed to be over a certain number and that rule seemed to be ignored here and so that was that was sort of tough yeah i think you know how we are with those panels. I mean, it's sort of, you know, everyone knows that ice dance is sort of a political slash. You have to, you have to have everybody in order. You know, mm -hmm. you have to have just everything has to fall into the right place. And you know, when you see the panel drawn, like who's going to sort of help pick you up and who's going to be really out there to crash you. Mm -hmm. So um, since it was not an element, it didn't disrupt badly. It was it was a little flaw. I wouldn't call it a disaster by any means. It was a little flaw. And you know, you always want to win a world championship with a clean skate, and it didn't quite happen, but uh I don't I don't think that it deserved to be really, and I'm not a judge, I can't say, but it didn't it didn't disturb me that much, and obviously it didn't disturb them. With the overall follow of the program, you mean? 
Yeah, I mean, yeah. overall, yeah. 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 And I thought, it? generally, like, I, is it just me? I don't know. But it seemed like so many of the scores were really inflated. Like, yes. they kept going up and up and up. And I was like, where's the top of this going? Right. Yeah. You know, it's like everybody that skated, it was a huge score. And then the next one, a huger score. And I was like, wow. I, you know, I don't know. I, it seemed inflated a little bit to me across the board. And I don't well, know if they think that's good for the sport when everyone's getting a season's best and a world record, or they think that inflating the numbers somehow makes the event more exciting. But it seemed very confusing, even as a viewer, because you would yeah. see each person, each team in the kiss and cry, be elated at the score only yeah. for it to be eclipsed moments later. Yeah. Right, by the next one. So that seemed to get carried away a little bit to me. I, I was like, where is the ceiling a little yeah. bit? Like, wow, it was, that was, that was a lot. Mm. Well, I think we've all loved the Montreal Dance School over the last years. I do wonder if they've hit their ceiling in terms of, you know, it was obvious that they had six judges on the panel here and that they're the controllers, David Molina is also considered to have been very close ties with them over the years. And this, you know, result is getting some pushback. And I think mostly in terms of the score, you know, I don't know if people have an argument. Some people do obviously with the order of the teams, but I think that this was a world record with a fall. And why yeah. is that? They've also made changes to the ice dance. And I was wondering what you think are you in favor of them taking the compulsory pattern out of the rhythm dance? I mean, what is your take on that? I didn't, I didn't mind that it was missing. It's almost like doing almost a mini free dance now. I, 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 in a way, I kind of miss the compulsory as long as it's an interesting one, um, because then you can really compare apples to apples. Mm -hmm. um, was I more entertained maybe by the fact that we didn't have that compulsory yeah. stuck in the US, honestly. I miss it in the way of the technical comparison apples to apples, but then I didn't miss it in just the overall uh, choreographic skate of it. I don't so, know that it ever made sort of sense in the middle of an original dance to do a compulsory it's, pattern. It's a little weird. It, yeah, it is a little weird. I agree with you on that because it's sort of like you get going into something and then all of a sudden it breaks and then you see kind of the old fashioned pattern kick in and right. then we break back to, you know, whatever. And yeah, yeah. And I, I would enjoy the fact that I didn't have to look for it this time, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> and I would imagine it's very difficult to find music also because those were the moments in a rhythm dance, you, you've got the piece playing and then suddenly it has to fit a certain beat and the whole music would, yeah. would also change to accommodate yeah. it. It yeah, always seems have to look at your beats per minute and have, yeah, I mean, it is sort of a pain in the butt to have to edit it that way just to suit the compulsory. So for my just personal entertainment, I liked it this way. Mm. I know next year they're going to do an 80s theme and I skate with a junior team that's doing a Footloose medley. And I love it because I listen to an 80s countdown every week, but uh, these kids have no idea what Footloose is or what the character is supposed to be. And Kristen's always telling them it needs to be more 80s. They have not a clue, but it's fun to watch <laughs> this development, but yeah. yeah. It's a wide open genre. Yeah. I mean, when you think about the 80s, <laughs> I mean, there's just, there's so many movies. There's, there's there just so many bands. There's so many ways you can go with it. It's, the, you're going to see, I think, a huge, vast variety of things. Uh, I think it'd be kind of fun, interesting. I'm sort of wondering what all that's going to be about. Yeah. And I think if you want to make the classy, unexpected move, you remember that a lot of opera and classical music was also composed in the 1980s. <laughs> And I don't that know that that's what they're thinking oh. for the original dance, John Rhythm Dance. <laughs> Good point, Jonathan. Oh, I'd be dear. looking Thank into you. that. Yeah. <laughs> totally. Um, what did you make of Chaka and Bates' free dance here this year? I mean, it's a very avant-garde type um, theme. To me, it never fully worked throughout the season. And when you have, I always think that when you have to change a program, the theme, the story, the music, a bunch of times that maybe it's time for the program to just be scrapped altogether. I don't know, what's your take on that? I think it had a real identity crisis for a long time. They were, I think they were trying to figure out 
what it was and then it wasn't working in the beginning and so then they were shifting and trying to morph it into something else and then you know it just kept it was an identity crisis it was trying to figure out what it was relationship and love and then fire and ice and you know all of that so but i i have noticed that in past years the first early part of the season when they put their material out compared to what the program actually becomes is like a night and day difference they keep picking at it they keep adjusting it they keep tweaking and trying to improve and it always does it gets better and better through the season uh I think that it was beautifully skated, except for the little, you know, the little sit down fall. Um, and I think it's interesting. Is it my favorite that they've ever done? No, maybe not. But um, I appreciate that they're trying to reach into different areas and grow themselves and not rely on the same recipe all the time. Um, and she's just an exquisite creature. I mean, Madison, beautiful, no matter what she is. And I actually think that Evan came a long way this year, especially in the rhythm dance. He looked happy and he was moving and it was like he was into it. And he just looked like he was having a ball and 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 it was natural on him. I, he's always appeared to be a little bit uh, struggles, maybe a little bit with when it comes to that kind of loose and edgy and cool stuff. But he was like, I really I thought he brought it. I really did. He's moving better to me this year, just in a fluid or abstract way. He's just, he's like catching up with her a little bit. Mm. And I can appreciate it. It maybe wasn't my favorite program ever of theirs, but I liked, I liked, I liked it. Mm. Well, and as opposed to, you know, there have been other American teams in the past that have come out in the fall, mm -hmm. maybe not had material that's gone over great. So yeah. then we would always hear these stories. Oh, we're revamping it and we're editing it and we're, we're reassessing it. And each time it would come, it was just sort of a sideways step. This, I did not care for the free dance in the fall, but by the time they got to the Grand Prix final and then nationals and then four continents and then here, it was interesting to see that they actually had changed it. They had uh -huh. actually improved proved it with the changes they made as to yeah. sometimes in the past, we were told teams were making changes, but we couldn't really tell. So I, I, it, the, the evolution yeah. of, of this program has been kind of remarkable to see. And I think the real yeah. star of the program are these lifts and the elements in that choreographic slide where she's in the splits. Oh my mm -hmm. goodness, just incredible. Yeah, yeah. I always think of you as being an expert person at being lifted. So did you do a lot of Pilates off the ice? Cause you had some lifts, Renee, and those stars on ice programs and- oh, Make me, you know, it's so funny because people still come up to me and say, we still watch your material and your lifts. And I just want to cringe. I, I, I'm just like, Why? I don't know. It was like 30 years ago. <laughs> And I'm like, move on, move on. Um, I did enjoy lifts and I, I do have a lot of people ask me about them. Um, and I think Madison and Evan are spectacular with them. Um, I, you know, I, I think it's a highlight of theirs. Uh, and I think, like you were saying, Jonathan, the way the program evolved was really impressive. If there was one little thing that kind of I would say maybe could have used a little help was that last 20 or so seconds of the program. It's building, it's building. And then it comes down right around that choreo step. Mm -hmm. And it sort of finishes on an empty moment to me. I, I don't know, musically, I sort of felt like it lost the energy somewhere right at the end, the last 20 seconds or so, and it was over. And it was like, oh, okay. Whereas it mm. sort of had me until that moment, but um, mm. yeah, you're right. They have great highlights. Great. I felt like they opened with a really like striking pose, right? And they went into these great lifts, but to me, the opening music never grabbed me. So if the opening music doesn't interest me, it can be a long four minutes. Yeah. I thought that the skating was great. I thought that the okay. lifts were fantastic. I do think that they held back a little bit on the twizzles and on the one foot they were a little tighter than they've been. And I thought that some of the judges were high and I was not sure if they were gonna get level fours there. And I think that, again, we talk about the panel. So I think that was yeah. more of 
questionable. Yeah. Things were rewarded, like I said, spectacularly rewarded. Um, and I, I, I actually, you're right. I think now that I that you brought that up about the music, mm -hmm. it was a little bit of a mess. It was strange for me. I, 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 I had trouble getting into it. Some music just carries you away and you just find yourself sailing with it. And that never did it for me. Their skating is wonderful. And I thought their music was beneath them a little bit. Mm -hmm. Great. Yeah. I also thought that the David Bowie was good, not great. Like I felt like they, I've always felt like they were trying to have like the Prince program moment, but it never reached that same level for me. And I think yeah. that that's just David Bowie's not as recognizable as Prince, right? He's yeah. not as iconic, so. It, it's an unusual choice for sure, even though you might put a Latin backbeat to it. Um, and again, I thought their skating surpassed their music. Mm -hmm. Great. Old and normally if you pick a great piece of music, it's it goes both ways. If you have a fabulous piece of music that you don't live up to, that's bad too. You always have to skate higher than your music. Your music mm -hmm. can't beat you up, that never works. Mm -hmm. What do you make of the Italian team? Because I, every year I really struggle to get into their material. I know that they're not matched well. She's taller than he is off the ice. I feel like it affects her posture on the ice. What, and she is a very strong skater. So what is your take on their material? They, um, they are masterful technically. Mm -hmm. Whether you like their material or not, you watch them and you never, feel feel ill at ease they when mm. i watch them i never am am, am worried that there's going to be a mistake they skate clean every time mm. however are they the most exciting couple to watch are they slightly physically mismatched yeah i mean yeah that's where the struggle is you know does the personality surpass their technique their technique rules mm. they're really masters at technique and then the material maybe just doesn't grab you the same way. The ending of the free dance is a lot. I don't know. It, it's it's a strange mix of stuff happening. It just doesn't work for me. What and it was never it about? Happened. Does anybody know? I, it was <laughs> hard. I it, was, it was like I'm a sorry. Heavy, I, like, mean, I love. What does anybody know? Was there a story? What was it about? Does anyone know? Are we all I think just generic heaviness? Yeah. It was dark. It was a darker theme. Okay. Yeah. I, you know, they were reaching for something with it, that, you know, the makeup and the, the costume and, and all of that. So there was a dark edge to it. And they were trying to get into a deep something. But I, I'm not sure I understood what it was. Yeah. What's the takeaway? I find myself working hard as an audience member sometimes to try to stay with whatever is happening. But what was interesting for me is in their choreographic step sequence and they were doing, the, you know, they do this judge's point or look at yeah. the judges that every team is doing now. Yeah. But then they were also doing these sort of interesting hand positions where he was behind her and all that sort of stuff. I found that to be one of the more interesting parts. I don't know if they're supposed to just go full blown modern to try to just like shake things up. I'll be interested to see where they go with this with their material for next season for the freedom yeah, i agree and they, they were trying for something i think a little more edgy you know yeah. more contemporary and also very good lifters mm. you consider that you know she's as tall or maybe even a little taller than him he manages and handles her like nothing mm. he's, he's a great lifter yeah well, we and were with different partners. So I was curious how peaking worked throughout the season with programs, because we do see the program so many more times now, right? So it's yeah. easy to get bored. How did that work in your day? Like, did you know that a free dance was going to have to evolve? How many times did you really compete at? You competed, depending on how many internationals you were given that year. So you had to, I remember having to do like, Midwesterns or whatever, plus having to do Skate America and whatever else we were assigned and then nationals and then world. So five, six times maybe, and you put your material out maybe just for monitors to look at. Um, you had to make changes because there were always people telling you to make changes. 
and, and so you did. You're trying to please everybody and yourselves. Um, I don't think. I don't think we looked at it back then as much as uh, peaking. Mm. I just remember training full blast all the time, mm. just mm. from one thing and making changes and the next one and make, make, making more adjustments and the next one. And there, you know, there weren't many opportunities to take breaks once your season started. When the season was over, there was a break mm. because the summer, now everybody seems to compete just straight across the year. Mm -hmm. events start in the summer right so and all on YouTube, YouTube all videoed so we're seeing every single iteration of of that yeah. program yeah. yeah every version and there's so many more events that you can enter now for your points and you know all of this so I think they're competing a lot more and maybe in in the sequence of you know having to compete that many events you have to take little breaks in between because how are you going to hold up for that long Hmm. I mean, if you're just training full tilt all the time, you have I just to wonder, see, is it good to, to see these programs way. that many times? Because I, the British team, when we saw their Lady Gaga program at the beginning of the season, it was seemed original and it had all of these movements. And because we've seen all the different versions and watched the program evolve, it's less exciting each time because you know what's coming. You know that they're going to stand at the barrier and point to the crowd and do all the moves. <laughs> And it almost like loses its effect. And it seemed like the program, like the programs almost need like built in evolution. And I felt like the British program to Lady Gaga just kind of stopped evolving at a certain point, like changes were happening, but it just, the skating didn't improve. The When you are a spectator who watches, like I'm sure you do, because Dave, Jonathan, you follow every single time it goes out in your study and you've watched it. Now, I don't look at all of those. I watch mm -hmm. Grand Prix mm -hmm. Worlds. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I view it, you know, four or five times where you've done what, triple that? Yeah. <laughs> every single time. So you're getting, you're, you know, you're getting numb to it probably as it goes along because you're seeing so many repetitions of it. I haven't viewed it that many times. And Would maybe that makes judges a too? Like huh? how do you think the judges are watching every iteration or are they question. Yeah. Probably paying attention. Yeah. 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 Could okay. be. Um, I'm not watching it that much um, throughout the season. I see it competed maybe three, four times a year. Whereas you're okay. looking at it way multiple, multiple times. Yeah, I think the Canadians looked like they had won the world championships the first time we saw the program. Obviously, Piper had appendicitis. It was interesting here. It didn't seem like everything was in line for them politically, and it yeah. did seem to affect their marks. I do think that they were probably the most consistent team over the two programs. They looked a little tight to me, especially in the rhythm dance. I thought that the free was good. I think it had been more emotional earlier in the season. I don't know. What was your take on them? Uh, I think that they lost a little bit of momentum mm -hmm. uh, leading up to Worlds because, you know, she was out. In general, I think, and I've always thought this, I think their speed is not as great as a lot of the other top teams that they're up against. I think they're a little bit slower, and I think that, how do I explain this? There's a they don't take up a lot of space. There's sort mm -hmm. of a feeling of in mm -hmm. versus yeah. broad, like when they skate, especially the girl. Maybe because I'm a girl, I notice that more, that when the girl has this amazing back and a neck and a posture that just seems endless, I'm drawn in. They seem mm -hmm. to to move and flow when you see that kind of a stature in a girl. And it doesn't matter if you're tall or petite, it really doesn't. And I, I feel Piper maybe doesn't have that reach like some of these other girls do. It's and always I, been her I noticed that. She's always had the posture issue and then she doesn't have natural legs that extend and that are yeah, long. Yeah, there isn't a huge broad extension and reach to their bodies. and. That's just their style. I, you know, I don't think it's anything that's a physical. Um, that I always know. think it's an easy thing to cut them down at the end of the season, not to cut them, but like when you have all the top teams against one another, 
yeah. and you're awarding four and fives for GOE, I do think aesthetically the fact that her legs are not super long and extended and that her posture is not like something that it's an area where they will score. And then the about. speed, just the general speed and power and flow across the ice, I don't think is as great as the other teams. I think he is really good. They're both a little bit stiff. Um, he has better extension and he's not like one of those huge guys that's throwing her around. But I think that in general, he's a really great skater, mm -hmm. a little bit stiffer. They're a little bit more controlled, right? Yeah. But I thought that their free dance was really good. And I could have easily seen a case for them winning here. And I think when people pick apart the results and look at that, I think that there's a real case. I just think that they get into this situation because I'm curious if they'll continue next season. It seems like every year they start stronger in the fall. And as we see other teams, we start to lose enthusiasm for their material over time or start to look. Whereas I think the, the second place Canadians or, you know, the Danish Canadians, uh, you know, Laurence Fournier Baudry and Nikolai Sorensen, she is so masterful. And I know that he's had a knee injury and he does not have the skating ability at this point that's up to her. But their material was so interesting for me. I loved the free dance. I thought I liked it more and more as it went out throughout the season. And it had, she just creates those pictures, even if maybe his skating wasn't up to snuff. I preferred it aesthetically. Uh -huh. And not to sound vapid, but the way her skirt in the free dance looks and all of those dance spins is like a work of art. It's as if it's like some sort of prop, beautiful piece of fabric that's also a part of it. I thought that was absolutely masterful. Each dance yeah. spin was so elevated by, by that skirt. It, it mm -hmm. made it a real highlight for it's me. It's like a prop that they yeah. used to a great advantage, right? And yeah. of course it goes perfectly with their, you know, Spanish material. Although I have to say, I've seen them do a lot of Spanish. Mm -hmm. Spanish many, many times over. Now, I actually loved their rhythm dance, mm. loved it. Okay. They were one of those couples that, that captured the slow, subtle, liquid tempo and did it just as well as the fast paced, you know, hit, hit, hit. Um, they showed the juxtaposition of both. Beautiful, beautiful. Mm. Whereas many couples can't do that. They're good more at one versus another. Those two were great at both. I mean, I thought their rhythm dance was amazing. I actually I think I liked it better than their free dance. And I love them. I just love everything they do. I think mm. that if we are judging this event without having seen previous competitions, without knowing reputations or previous results, I would have had them on the podium. So I imagine that next year they will be moving up in the world. I thought that they were stronger than the British team here. I thought in the skating skills, the extension. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. I, think the I would agree with that. Strong. I would agree with that. I think that they were, you know, I think when they got to Japan, I think everybody was talking about them. It was mm -hmm. like, wow, those Canadians are looking really good. So I was actually a little surprised that they were beneath uh, the Brits. Although the mm. Brits were, you know, they skated great as well. They're consistent and they're happy and they're fun and the audience gets right behind it. They're they just are so such fun. an exuberance. Yeah, it's infectious. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I do wonder if the Brits, like they, they seem young because they're smaller and they do these peppy programs, but we have seen them for at least five years at the senior level. I do wonder if they're going to have to do something a little bit more serious and... You're going to have to have a little variety, yeah, because we know that they're good at what they do and this is what they do. And um, are they going to be able to, to expand and broaden their horizons and interpret different things? It'll be interesting to see. Um, because Are we sure that they stand out with the 80s theme when everyone else is doing? Because they've kind of done that style in the past yeah. where they do yeah. those programs that are crowd appealing and fun. How creative can they be when everyone is doing that genre? I think we'll right, be right. And my eye goes to um, him. Yes. Oh, oh yes. yes. I mean, yes. when I watch their their uh, choreo step, whether it's in their rhythm dance or their free dance. My eyes are on him. He's he's unbelievable. He's like unbelievable. you know, he just the way he, it's like he takes you know. to the club. Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I just I watch that boy and I'm like, wow. Yeah, yeah. yeah. 
actually had a little bit of a stumble here, but that was uncharacteristic. He's usually always solid. Yeah, solid. solid. Yeah. Well, what did you make of some of the other teams here? I thought it was interesting to me, Green and Parsons have had an identity crisis all season. They switched coaches to a new team. And I felt like we were back maybe 10, 15 years to like when Rina Zueva was the top coach. I just thought, I, I don't know, this Gershwin, the Gershwin, the styling, the muted color, I just, for me, it was a big miss throughout the year. And it didn't seem like where the sport is going. They had something last year that mm -hmm. I really, really, it just excited me. I'm like, oh, they're picking a direction. They're choosing something for themselves that's really them. They're exploring. And they were, I, I loved it. I know maybe mm -hmm. it wasn't everybody's cup of tea, but I thought that they were trying to do something new for themselves. And then when this year came along, I was, I was thinking, I can't wait to see what they're going to do. I can't wait. They're on, they're on to something here. And then it went completely another way. And I was like, oh man. They had another program before they switched coaches. And I liked it a lot better. And it was more. I it, did I see that? What was it? No, they never competed it fully, but I had seen it in practice and it, they were just, utilizing more of their shapes and you know a new team a new choreographer but terry's daughter went to that rink and they left at the same time and yeah, yeah uh, what a pity because um there's something there that need they need to let they need to explore and go deeper with it they just need to be allowed to do that they have mm -hmm. to find some some way of getting support for that because they have they're both excellent they're both excellent, like sure-footed, really nice edges and things. Like they have the ingredients to make a beautiful, you know, pie. It's just all there. And I, I, I don't know. It, it almost seems like they're wearing a shirt that doesn't fit well. Like, you know, when you put on something and it's not you, it just doesn't quite fit, but you're wearing it and you're like, I don't know. I think there's so much more potential there. I'm really glad to say that because we we were talking about this. I thought their free dance last year showed so much promise for what the future of this team was. Yeah. It was individual to them, they took risks. It was interesting. It was engaging. It was very dance forward, yeah. and then them to sort of like go totally general, kind of stale, outdated sort of stuff. I thought, oh no, you are on such a great great path. path. Well, we know yeah. that, you know, obviously it was probably a huge disappointment to them that they didn't make the Olympics. I personally would have sent them to the Olympics with that program last year, but I don't know if they felt, oh, we got punished for being interesting and now we're going to be generic and that got us to worlds. So I, I just hope they have the guts almost to go back and be interesting again. Yeah, I don't, yeah. yeah. I mean, I, who knows wh why that decision or, or why that was why that turned out the way it did and, and they changed course. It was like they took a hard left turn or something. Wow. Yeah, um, because I was very excited, hoping I would see that develop more. And then yeah. it didn't, and okay, I, I don't know why, but right. um, they're, they're very capable of doing really- They even had a great Prince program the year before they had a Prince free dance and it was really, I felt like they were in your face and trying to say something. And, and then it fell this season and it fell really flat for me. Yeah. Um, I felt like if they weren't number two from the US, they might've been lower. Uh, so I think that that probably helped them uh, here. Yeah. Um, I, I loved the Finnish team uh, here. I thought that she was absolutely Lovely. And I think that that is a team that's going to move up in the future. I love the Finns. They didn't have a great skate on mm -hmm. the free, um, but I have loved that free dance all year. She is exquisite. I cannot take my eyes off of her. It's like, where's the, you know, I don't look at the point. She's just so beautiful. She's like a thin reed that just floats through the air. Um, I think uh, Maurizio has done a great job with them. 
Mm-hmm. And I, I look forward to what they're going to do because I do. I, I thought they were gorgeous all season. They, that rotational list is mind blowing to me. Yeah, and with, isn't it? They were really riding that wave in the Europeans' performance, which was yeah. such an iconic moment. By the time that rotational lift comes, it's like 8,000 miles an hour and it's just stunning positions. It's such yeah. a moment. And like butter, I mean, it's like, it's going and it's going and there isn't an effort in it. It just, it just, uh, it's amazing. I mean, just amazing. And ju- they cover ice well and they're just gorgeous. I mean, she can't hit a bad line to save her life. And he too. He, mm-hmm. like they're, they skate close together. Their flow is great. Um, they're just exquisite and elegant and lovely. Mm -hmm. Um, you know who I really, I clapped when, and I'm sitting by myself watching the RD with my dog and the checks finished that RD and I just stood up and applauded all by myself for them. I love this for you and and your dog are just like really enjoying this check team together. (laughs) Yes. She's sitting over here looking at me, uh, but I was so impressed. I really like it. It was a, a tapped, a, you know, I, they're a brother and sister, which, you know, kind of can make things a little awkward when you're doing, you know, Latin stuff, but um, it was, I thought it was great. I liked it better than their free dance, mm. you know, but I like them. She reminds me a little bit, her kind of, Attack like um, Hubble, Hubble, Madison Hubble. Yeah, yeah. And he is his posture, his line. He has a beautiful back. He has great arms. Like he's really impressive. Like for a boy, he's not stiff at all. Yeah. And, if, and they don't look like a brother and sister to me. They don't even look like they're related. Mm. But, you know, there you go. Um, I think she maybe can, needs to find her softer self when they try other things. Uh, their free dance was, what was it, sort of the earth? Climate change, yeah. Kind of a thing. Wasn't sure what that all was about, but so solid. Mm. I really liked I, them. I was I'm just really one. thrilled that they, they placed eighth here because one of my favorite dance teams is the Czech team that won the Junior Worlds for dance this year. Oh. I have a feeling now we have paved the way for two Czech brother sister teams that are both like these incredibly strong, amazing, powerful teams. So I I look forward to hopefully seeing them both at Worlds next year. Yeah, that would be great. Good for Czechoslovakia. And my question though was why I'm so perplexed by Lithuania. Okay. What do you mean? They were from a school that had six judges on the panel, Renee. Oh, Remember when Natalia Lidachuk did all the countries? <laughs> them all. Yeah. Were you an ice yeah. dancer? What's there to be perplexed about? You know? Like, <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh, I don't know. I don't understand. I, uh, I don't, I'm sorry. I, I just don't get it. I don't, I don't know why they were as high as they were where were they hold on they were seven they were yeah in both, in both I portions. couldn't have had i just they're in in my in my heart they're not seventh yeah i, don't I just think it. that for their size they didn't cover a lot of ice and i always look at that so okay if you're tall like brian boitano you've got to cover ice like brian boitano and they do they cover oh. ice they're solid but i i don't know i one, the one positive I can give them is that I thought it was an interesting move that in their choreo slide, he was the one sliding. That I thought, oh, interesting, because we, we've seen She's supporting, sort of- yeah. So there, we said what something. Was, and their free, what was their free dance? Uh, it was sort of a, the unitar, the one piece. Yeah, it was like angular, almost like a Tron, Tron thing. kind okay. of thing, yeah. What's it yeah. for me, really? It wasn't, you know, your dog and I weren't applauding for that free dance, but, you know, <laughs> it gave a good effort. You know, we weren't having that moment at home, but. <laughs> yeah. uh, what did you think of Christina and Anthony? A, another dated throwback choice for the free dance. For me, it didn't work. Um, 
Yeah. Um, I'm liking Christina better this year than I ever have. I agree. I actually think that she has now become the highlight of the team. Yes. Uh, I don't know. I think a few years ago, maybe three, four years ago, I think I was really sort of excited mm -hmm. about them. Yes. Thinking, thinking, okay, this is going to be our next, mm -hmm. our next, you know, they're growing up and they're going to be a big thing. And then it kind of never really happened. Mm -hmm. And I don't, I don't know. I'm, I'm kind of behind her because I feel like she's, she's really bringing it. But I'm not sure about Anthony. I know he had a surgery and something going on. So they're they're why are they falling back? I, but they are. Yeah. They're, and and they're I thought that Vadim, I don't know if at nationals, I thought that Vadim um and uh, Zingas and Kolesnik, I thought that they were moving forward and they are with Igor Spielbond, who know who's experienced and knows politics. I don't know if you remember that he um, you know, maybe tried to keep you out of the Olympics once upon a time, but um, I Thanks think- Thanks for that reminder. Yeah. <laughs> Got it. No, yeah. I think of you often, Renee. I, I also skated a rink with someone who might've skated into you at a nationals warm up and broken your <laughs> yeah, wrist. So you're too. always with us, Renee. So, um, but I think- <laughs> I got your back. I think that the team might not, I think that Vadim is moving up on Anthony's. Yes, and for the short time that they've been together, mm -hmm. wow. Yeah. Together a very short time. And she, you know, she's coming from being a free skater, right? Yeah. Right. Yes. And yet, and every position she did at Nationals was stunning. Great stunning. job. Great yeah. job. I really, I was surprised that they actually went from third to fourth. Okay. I, I was. was hoping they would have, I would have had them still in third. That, uh, we mentioned that I, at I the Nationals. I was national surprised game. that it flipped. I really was. I was surprised that it flipped. Um, but yeah, so the, the, the potential of uh, Carrera Ponomarenko, I thought, was there a few years ago. And I, it just hasn't, it hasn't emerged. I think Vadim could be second next season in the U.S. if things, unless Green and Parsons go back to the path that they were on before this, I think material-wise. We they, shall see. Yeah, everybody is going to have to make some really good choices because um, I think the old school throwback stuff isn't quite delivering. I don't yeah, know, I so think let's got to find a new way to, to show something. So let's talk about this for a second. So when you started like choreographing for teams, were you doing that like right after you were competing or was there sort of a period of time in between your competitive career and when you were choreographing? And I only wonder because these two teams we're talking about that sort of seemingly have kind of old fashioned materials are, are training with Scott Moyer and Charlie White and these people that were so recently competing. And I wonder if because they're sort of new to this whole thing, they're just defaulting to what they did, which is now giving us this idea that it's 15 years ago. Could be. I don't know if it's a default or I don't know if they think what what might be coming back around again. Do you know uh, what I okay. mean? Yeah. I don't know what the I don't know what the thought is behind that because you know how things go away and then it's retro and then you bring it back and then you know you think it's sort of got a fresh take. Um, I don't know what the thought is behind that, but I think that if you're going to choreograph for couple A, B, pair, singles, whatever they are, I think you have to pay attention to who they are and not make it a shadow of yourself. Mm -hmm. They have to be who they are and then just you know, grab onto that and make it the best they can be. Yes, you have to change up every now and then. You have to open your horizons and try different things, which, and sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't, but you have to try. You do, yeah. you really have to explore. Um, and I think you have to allow the couple, you have to figure out what they do best and camouflage what they don't do well. And that's where you start. Should you know, Tessa Virtue was always involved in Scott's programs. I think he should ask her to consult maybe for as he packages the teams and things like that. I think that there's something missing. And I 
with Charlie, I felt like he went back to Marina, like what she would do for a staple, but it, to me, Green and Parsons looked like her sixth or seventh place team from back in the era when they were dominating in Detroit. So, yeah, but I yeah. think because the junior worlds had like four or five really strong teams uh, at the top that will all be age eligible by the Olympics, most of them. And these teams ahead of them, I don't see a standout star that I think this one's going to win the Olympics. So I think that it's going to emerge. Yeah. Watch yeah, that junior you know, tech team. I think it's junior <laughs> tech team. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, Jonathan, I'm going to have to really okay. study that junior team. Okay. Yeah. 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 Junior Grand Prix final, not not there, yeah. but but at Junior Worlds. Okay. <laughs> okay. You expect but, yeah. the Russians to be back? Oh, well, okay. Before we even talk about that, there were Russian coaches at Worlds. Yes. Yeah. What? Wait, now what? Stop. Yeah. What's going they, on? They represent other federations. So technically they're employed as the Italian Federation coach or the Georgian Federation coach. It's very legitimate. When Russians are banned, aren't you banned? Only the athletes. <laughs> Only the athletes. I had assumed in the beginning it was anyone belonging to the Federation. I and then did it was, too. Yeah, last year at Worlds, we were seeing Russian yeah. coaches with the Russian Federation. Well, when Renee tried to go to the Olympics, her partner was still considered Russian. So the fact that a Terry's considered, you know, Italian now might be a little bit of a stretch. So, Ooh. yeah. Aye, aye, aye. Yeah, because yeah. I saw Irina Zhuk uh, there. Mm -hmm. I saw a Terry standing and I thought, uh Yeah. Mm. To me, it seems like they'll be back if the coaches are among us, right? Well, the, the ISU permits that. So is the ISU, is that just one little foot in the door and then they kick the door open more and more? That's what it feels like. Like you break a boundary. A you can... Yeah. I mean, this war is horrific. Horrific. No. Yeah. I, I, ugh. And we've even talked hard. about in some of the other shows, the big ISU guest at Four Continents was Lekernik which is already, you you wonder if they're just sort of getting us ready for what's coming. Well, he now works for the Hungarian Federation and the Hungarian team, you can get citizenship in three months. You can, so if you haven't competed in an ISU event in a year, you can go and represent Hungary. Yeah, and, wild. And they're trained by Irina Zsuk. So, it, yeah. Mm. It's, wild. It's yeah. wild. It upsets me. Yeah. yeah. It does. I, I, I mean, yeah. So I, I don't know. I think it'll be interesting. I think we will see certain couples back next year, whether Russia is back or not. It seems like Terry's daughter has been training in the U.S. They sat out this entire season. So I think we're going to start to see things shake up next season. And you know who, uh, speaking of Russians, I've, I've really, like, my eyes are really... I was impressed. Um, Kaganovskaya. Oh, yeah, and, in Bangalore. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I just happened to be surfing on YouTube. Um, I don't know, way back in the beginning of the season, came across, you know, the Russian events yeah. that they were putting on. I saw that free dance and I watched it three times in a row. It's so good. It's so, this is on Krilova's team. And yeah. I have loved them since they were juniors. And there are ones I would have been interested to have seen hypothetically where they would have fallen in this mix because I found their material so interesting. Amazing. And yeah. they're young. She looks like a little Giselle Bunchen. Mm -hmm. you know, beautiful, light. Um, they're yeah, they weren't in they were in juniors just a short time ago, really. So it, you know, get a little experience and polish on them. That's a team to deal with for future. Yeah. And then Stepanova yeah. and Gukin announced that they're moving to Sasha Julin this week. That was yeah. interesting because they've been out for a year and- She had a baby, right? Yeah, and maybe she did too. Like there's a lot happening there. So- well, Navka had a baby and came back and competed. Yes. No, it can be done. So it can be I'm done. Just... Um, I'm not surprised that they're coming back. I was more surprised at her pregnancy, actually. Um, but I'm not surprised that they would be trying to make a comeback. So when you know you're making a comeback and you're up against that little Kaganovskaya, and with uh, talk about original material, great right. lifts, everything original. 
everything. Like that's a future right there. Mm -hmm. Somebody's trying to, you know, break and make new movement and come up with their thing. Yeah. Put them mm -hmm. on a world stage. It'll be interesting when the Russians come back, when. Yeah. What country will Diana and Gleb represent? I mean, it's still out yeah. up in the air. They, yeah. Um, Are you, what is your take on that? Well, I think if Russia doesn't come back, I think they will represent Israel. If Russia comes back, I think they will represent Russia. I think that that is kind of what they are doing. They had Russia is around with back within a year. Okay, do you anticipate Russia coming back when? In a season? By I Olympics? think if they come back, but they only get one skater per at the World Championships if they come back, unless they were to make a special allotment. And I think the other countries would have a fit. So if they do come back, they don't have as many spots. So it's going to take a while to build back up, theoretically. And in the coming weeks is when they're supposed to make the announcement, right, about the Paris games. So yeah. I think we're kind of wondering if that will set the tone. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it will. It seems like the IOC wants to say yes and everyone else wants to say no. So yeah. it's, what yeah. is Thomas Bach thinking? I mean, really, everybody is writing letters and protest, like Olympic champions from all sports are starting to you know, send letters out and really stand up for, you know, the right ethical thing to do. And and they still haven't ever solved their situation with WADA. That's still ongoing. Yeah. Their lab is not accredited. And the Camila Valjeva case is maybe a year from being resolved, I read yeah. recently. And all the team event from Olympics are still sitting there with their empty boxes and no medal. Right. I mean, and when- And what color it will be. Yeah. 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 I, mean, I don't think they can be back until all of that is resolved. So I do think that if Thomas Bach allows Russia back, you will see everything uh, taken care of, very, cleaned up very quickly, right? Bing, like, bing. Yeah, bing, bing. that's bing. my prediction. But technically everything is independent. So technically everything could drag on for a long time. They could be back competing before that case is resolved. Yeah. Yeah, just waiting sitting and waiting to see, huh? Well, I wish that the clean athletes were just more protected than the dirty yeah. athletes. Thing. You have to start protecting the ones that are doing it right. Did you know about doping in your day? Like, was it talked about? Was it yeah. whispered about? Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. It's always been there, always. Yeah. I mean, the last I I the argument, how could doping help skating? but all of these things were to, not necessarily to build muscle mass. Like that's where people get confused. It was just to oh. allow people to overtrain. Marina Klimova, Anthony Podorenko's yeah. mother, tested positive for steroids in 91. Yeah. I know. So. It's always been around. Yeah. I mean, and when East Germany was East Germany, you know, it's always been. It's always been there. It's just how clever is everybody getting it to, to be one step ahead of getting caught. That's mm. all. Well, Terry said today that she didn't know how it happened because she watched the footage from the doping test and she didn't see anything. Meanwhile, <laughs> that was a great I'm No, yeah. I'm <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, what was your moment of the dance event, Renee? Oh. Oh, I didn't know you were, oh my gosh, I would have to think. Um, the dance event, the moment of the dance event. I, I have a couple. Okay. Um, I think Maddie and Evan skating just a gorgeous RD mm -hmm. and just the fact that they won. Okay. It might not have been perfect, but they got the job done and did it. Um, I also, the Danadians. Okay. <laughs> and I got to put the checks RD in there too. I don't know why it just really grabbed me. I, I you know, yep. So I'm going to say, I'm going to say that split move in the chalk and Bates program, because I think that's just incredible. That's Great control. And I'm going to say, I'll call them Canada Danes. Uh, her face in the choreo slide at the end of their free dance was just giving me everything. So that was my other moment, my other moment of the event. I want to say the Cana Danes too. And I know that he's been injured, but people always say that 
you know, the guy is stronger. Why can't you have a girl that's stronger? And I think that she's been fantastic this entire season. And to me, they really stood out. They got better every competition. So we want to know what your event was, uh, what your moment from the Ice Dance event. So leave it in the comments below. And thank you so much, Renee, for joining us. Thank Always you, guys. Always. I just realized we forgot to talk about Daisuke Takahashi. We were chatting offline about Marita and it came up. What are you making about Daisuke, a single skater moving to ice dance, Renee? We saw him here his third season. What did you make of this? Yeah, um, he always made me a little bit nervous in the past because like it was a little kind of shaky and reliable. Some of those lifts were, you know, and a twizzle, you know, and I was, it, it would kind of, but they put me really at ease this year. I have to say that um, I thought their rhythm dance was a little panicky. It was so much going on. It was just so much. And I think they could be real, have a moment really good at maybe lengthening things. And then just a juxtaposition of having both, like, you know, the Canadians do, because I thought they were exquisite at showing both. Um, but their free dance went off great, you know, even though it is another Phantom of the Opera again, but um, I thought they, they skated really well. And I think they were really happy under the pressure of, being in Japan. And it is amazing that Daisuke is doing this. Mm -hmm. At 37, it's just, it's picking up and doing it, yeah. I hope yeah. they continue, because I would like to see them do something that's not Phantom, now that they seem to be getting better. And each season, I, I agree with you, the first season when they did the rotational lift, I remember being I very know. nervous, but they've gotten- so nervous. Better. Yeah. Yeah, but, no, I think, you know, that's that's a big learning curve. to. To go from where you were as a single skater, which is, you know, the top of everything. And then now you're going to lift a girl and learn all the partnering skills and, you know, kudos to him. It took a while. It's a, it's like learning a whole second language, but he got it this year. He's got it now. Again, seeing three out of four disciplines won by Japan here. Yeah. When, when we would not have anticipated that in like a Paris event previously. I just hope that Daisuke's presence in the discipline can encourage further More. in the Japanese ice dance program. Yeah. Well, we saw a video of Marin Honda trying ice dance and she didn't continue with it, but I think that she should because she looked promising uh, for that, so. Yeah. yeah, they're so strong, the Japanese in singles, you know, that they could probably keep pairs going pretty well yeah. too because you need those side-by-side -side jumps you know like we've seen a lot of double side-by-side -side jumps this year and you know the Russians are doing triple everything um but you know that's probably when you have such great jumping skills putting a pair together probably makes sense the dance is just a whole other genre but they it can be done I mean it just can be so they should this they should more did your journey begin in singles and then transfer to dance or were you pretty dance focused out the gate? I think um, when I started skating, we did dance. Well, we had figures and we did free skate and we did dance. Just about everybody did all the disciplines. Ah. You started out like this. Everybody skated everything and everybody did figures. So you learned how to do clean turns and control edges and all of that. So that's how everybody kind of did it. And then once you became sort of skilled, you sort of branched off. But most people started, Brian Orser is a fantastic ice dancer. Oh, okay. He, I think has his gold medal in ice dance, you know, the testing skills, all those dances and compulsories. And I could skate a rumba with him like that. He loves the Have rumba. you? Yes. Have you Okay. When we would do shows and stuff together, you know, back when we were all doing shows, he'd be like, Renee, let's do the rumba. And I was like, what? But in Canada, it was the same thing. You did figures, free skate and dance. Everybody did. You grew up skating, learning all those skills. And he was so easy to skate with in a compulsory. Oh. Okay. Yeah. So did you compete against Tracy in ice dance? In the 80s? Yeah, Tracy and Rob were, you know, already really established when I was just, you know, little coming up. Um, but yes. Yep. So were you like big competitors with Susie Wynn before? Because we think of you in my day, I remember you competing against Punsel and Swallow, but. Yes, yeah, Susie Wynn. Yes, also. Yeah. All right. Okay. I go way back. <laughs> I'm well, old. the other day, uh, Tony Wheeler was uploading on YouTube when you're scrolling around videos from the 88 Skate America exhibition. And I think your video popped up there. So. <laughs> oh, cringe. What? 
I don't know. It was, you're really horrified by your own success. Renee, you won a lot of national titles and things. I don't, you world, you won the world pros. I don't know. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so I mean, so yeah. if the viewers are going to go YouTube, the program of your choice, what would um, you have them look at? I think it was probably more of the, you know, I didn't love competing, to be honest. I liked performing and I wanted to be artistic. I just wanted to create art. And so for me, when we, you know, were able to go to Stars on Ice and turn professional and do those things, and, you know, we had freedom to just do anything we wanted, I, that was kind of my thing. Okay. Um, competing was just a means to an end and, you okay. know, that was fine whatever. Gorsha liked competing. I was like, oof. But um, I think back to, um, I liked to, there are two programs that I really liked in a professional vein. And one of them was the Nina Simone piece, um, Everything Must Change. Mm -hmm. And another one was a classical piece. It was a Beethoven piece, um, Ghost Sonata. Oh, yeah. I think we did that on Stars on Ice too. Um, and that I really, I really liked as well. I saw the Nina Simone in person. I remember it well, Renee. So oh. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, thank like you so that. much for coming on. You are so fun to discuss ice dance with. Thanks guys. Really enjoyed it.